Sam Henry, former coach of the Rugby World Cup winning New Zealand All Blacks, will lead coaching clinics organized by Tiger Rugby, the Northern California RFU, Nkrfu, Life West Rugby and the rugby site over a 12-day period in cities across the country next month. Former IDM Cup coach and current Life West Athletic Director and Nkrfu Director of Coaching Adrian Ferris initiated discussions with Tigers James Walker to offer coaches around the country these unique development opportunities, knowing Henry well from previous experiences in New Zealand. As coaches, we should always be looking for avenues to expand our knowledge of the game, Walker, Tigers Director of Rugby, said. Rugby is continually evolving, and we firmly believe that, if you are not elevating yourself, you are losing ground. What better person than Sir Graham Henry, who himself has been through many trials on his way to the pinnacle of the game, to share his knowledge with aspiring coaches? We are truly honored to have this opportunity. Considered one of the most successful international rugby coaches of all time, Henry has previously been brought to the United States for talks with Minnesota Youth Rugby via the rugby site with colleague Wayne Smith. We have to have to thank Tiger Rugby, Life West and the Northern California Union for helping facilitate and promote this event for the benefit of the American rugby community, USA Rugby CEO Dan Payne said. This is an event similar to recent events supported by United World Sports, Captains Knock, Atavis, etc., where organizations in our country take the initiative to help educate our players, coaches and fans. Ultimately, the game in our country wins thanks to these efforts and events. Coaching clinics in Chicago and San Francisco will be preceded by evening events with the former All Blacks coach, a special nightly occasion to be replicated in Atlanta. Henry's 12-day tour will end with a final master coaches clinic at Clemson University Rugby's National Athletic Village Field. The full list of dates and locations, with registration links, can be found below. USA Rugby referees are pleased to announce a partnership with Advantage Trademark Rugby Referee Development System to provide the software at operating cost to local referee organizations. The video-based software is unique in that it supports and develops referees throughout their careers, from the outset to the highest level of international officiating. The system, based on strategic and tactical competencies, covers 10 units. Advantage Trademark allows referees to upload video of matches and create playlists, tagging the video which collects the data from the match. The system employs a special feature that enables the color coding of teams to easily identify trends. The referee can also tag errors or make comments about decisions to assist in their development. In addition, reviewers and coaches can also be assigned to matches. Referees and reviewers share a playlist. Both can tag the video and record data, identify errors and add comments, and comment on one another's playlist items. Also included is a message board to share clips from the playlist with members to discuss and find solutions for better group application and direction. When the playlist is complete, competencies achieved are selected. The system provides brief explanations of each competency to provide guidance. The competencies allow the referee, reviewer, and coach to identify the areas well refereed and the areas in need of development. With the system available to all match officials, a back line for Pete Steinberg's U Chula Vista, California, 20-year-old Anna Karen Pedraza will lead the back line for Pete Steinberg's USA Women's Eagles Saturday, April 1st, in the final match of the 2017 Can-Am series at the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center. The head coach has made five changes to the starting 15 that kept third-ranked Canada to 10 points through 40 minutes Tuesday, March 28, with Team USA Olympian Nicole Heverland set to partner the Lindenwood University scrum half. Tickets for Saturday's match scheduled to kick off at 6 p.m. ET, are available for purchase online for $10, while the live broadcast will be available to subscribers of the Rugby Channel. The tough thing about Tuesday's match is it was a game of two halves for us, Steinberg said. In the first half we were happy with our ability to launch and apply pressure defensively. We had the structure in the second half but weren't able to launch. We've continued to make line breaks. We had six or seven Tuesday, but we earned we only scored one try. What we've talked about is converting those opportunities against one of the best teams in the world. Pedraza replaced Joe Favessi in the middle of the second half of the 39-5 defeat, with the Olympian out of contention for Saturday selection as she goes through concussion protocol. The new number 9 made her international debut in the substitute appearance, providing a threatening set of backs with quick ball and limited opportunities. Women's Eagles 7 stalwarts Nia Tapper and Kristen Thomas return to the wings, while Tuesday's tri-scorer, Aleph Kelter, moves from outside to inside center. Apart Apart from the scrum half and semi-professional full back Jess Wooden, the back line was recently seen playing together on the HSBC World Rugby Women's 7 Series. Heverland earns her first start with the XV's side since the 2015 Women's Rugby Super Series encounter with New Zealand, while Ryan Carlisle will partner Kelter in the midfield at outside centre. Because we want to play with width, we want someone who can really pass the ball, Steinberg said. Anna Karen was called up to the seniors at the National All-Start Competition 
in the winter played well there and completely earned her start this weekend. As a team, we have consistently created a lot of opportunities out wide over the past year. One of the big focuses we've had is recognizing and executing those opportunities. Captain Tiffany Faye returns to an unchanged front row alongside Katie Benson and Joanna Kitlinski, with Rugby World Cup veteran Stacey Bridges joined by the incoming Molly Kinsella. Though the Eagles have worked in the off days to offset a top Canadian scrum, a newer look lineout performed capably. Flanker Christian Feel was successful on multiple occasions in the air on defensive and offensive throw-ins alike, and will have a new back row partner in Sarah Parsons to follow in open play. Women's Premier League Championship Most Valuable Player Jordan Gray will continue to hound the Canadian defence from the back of the scrum at the number 8 position. The Eagles have stressed consistency in intensity leading to their final international test prior to Women's Rugby World Cup 2017, which will kick off against Canada, a team boasting a majority of the 2014 finals squad. Canada's 39-5 victory also puts the 2014 World Cup finalist in good standing to retain the Canem Cup, awarded to the winner of the rivalry matchup each year. The Eagles claimed rights to the trophy in 2015 with a victory in Alberta on Canada Day, while the border rival reclaimed it in Salt Lake City last year. The, the United States holds a slim 18-17 advantage in the matchup that began 30 years ago. Supporters planning to attend Saturday's match on the South Field at the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center are urged to purchase tickets in advance via Eventbrite as they are available for $10. A fee of $15 will be charged on site, while those unable to attend can watch the match live on the rugby channel with a paid subscription. The 36th matchup in the Can-Am rivalry will kick off at 6 p.m. ET.